Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating cutouts in Illustrator. The kind of cutouts that you're seeing on the screen here. On the left hand side here is a image of a globe. Now while it might look like these lines could potentially be white, they're not. They're actually cut out from the original image. So the original image was the one that we see on the right and that's from another video that I have here. If you want to learn how to make these globes, then go and look at that video. But what came up with a subscriber was how could they take the image on the right and make it into the image on the left? Well, it's not totally easy so let's have a look at some of the issues. I'm going to create a brand new document that we can just have a quick look at. I'm going to create a couple of circles here, the sort of typical donut shape. So we've got a shape that's going to be filled with a color. I'm just going to remove the stroke off it, it's just going to make it a little bit easier to see. And then I'm going to draw a second circle in the middle of the first. Let's give it a different color. I'll select over both shapes and if this is going to be a donut then we would click here on horizontal align center and vertical align center so we're sure that the blue shape is in the middle of the red. Now the easiest way of creating a donut knocking out this blue area out of the pink circle is to select both these objects and to use one of two tools either the shape builder tool or the pathfinder. Now we're going to use the pathfinder because it's so much easier. For the Pathfinder, you'll just click to open the Pathfinder palette. If you don't see it, choose Window and then Pathfinder. The blue circle is on top of the pink. We're just going to click here on this option, which is minus front. In other words, subtract the blue from the pink. The result is our donut. If we test this with a filled shape behind it, we're going to see through that pink shape to the blue shape that's at the bottom of this layer stack, if you like. So that is a hole in the middle of the shape. In fact, what has been created is what's called a compound path. Now you might see the word compound path appear and think, well, what did I do that's wrong because it's not a regular path? Well, you're going to get a compound path any time you have this situation where you've got a shape that has a hole in the middle or a hole somewhere in it. So that's a way of doing the sort of knockout look with shapes. But when we look at the actual globes that we were working with, things are a bit different. In the class that involved these globes, these things ended up as lines. When I select over these lines of longitude on the globe, you can see here that the stroke is black and there is no fill. That's telling us these are lines. And if I go to the lines of latitude, exactly the same thing. These are lines, they are not filled objects. So what I did was put a colored ellipse underneath it. And if we try and do something like our minus front, let's go and see what's going to happen. Now, I can't do it with both sets of objects at once, so let's just hide and lock down the lines of longitude and let's look at the lines of latitude. So I'm going to select the lines of latitude and I'm going to select my colored sphere. And then we'll go to the pathfinder and click minus front and things don't work out exactly the way we expected them to. The problem is that these things are lines. So the first thing that we need to do is what's called expand. So we're going to turn these from lines into filled shapes. So you do it by selecting the object and choose object and then expand. Now you're going to get a choice as to what you want to expand. We don't want to expand the fills because there were no fills that we want. We just want to expand the stroke because that's what we've got, stroke lines. I'll click OK. Now, with this object still selected, you'll see it's now got a fill, but it's got no stroke. So these are individual shapes. This is a shape that's got anchor points all the way around it rather than being a line that has a stroke. Now we're going to need to do that to both our objects. So let's go and get our lines of longitude. Do exactly the same thing with them. Object, expand, choose stroke, click OK. So we end up with groups and groups and groups and groups. So everything's sort of buried inside groups. For simplicity, I'm going to select both these objects and choose Object Ungroup and continue to do that until Ungroup is no longer an option. The result of that is that I now have a series of shapes. Some are running longitudinally and some are running 
in a sort of lateral way around the sphere. With these lines all still selected, what I'm going to do is put them all together. I'm just going to merge them. So I'll just click here on Unite. And that just makes a single object from all of those lines. And see, it's a compound path. Not surprising it's a compound path because it's got holes in it, because there are holes in between the lines. Anytime you have holes in an object, it's going to be a compound path. That's just the way Illustrator is. Okay, so now how do we cut this sort of grid shape out of the circle underneath? Well, we're going to select both objects, the grid shape and the circle underneath, and we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did when we were handling something as simple as a donut. We're just going to do minus front. Go to the Pathfinder, locate minus front and click it. The reason why we're using minus front rather than the shape builder tool is that the shape builder tool would have been pretty easy on the donut, not so easy on this shape. So it's worthwhile learning that minus front command when you've got a complex object on top and you just want to remove that from the shape underneath. So let's see now what we're left with. What we've got here is a group. It's this object over here, it's a group and it's just a whole series of small colored objects that together go to make this overall object. Now you can leave this globe looking like this as a group of objects, but you know you can also make it into a compound path, even though there are not holes per se in this, just the whole series of objects we can actually make them a compound path. So what we would do is select the group of objects and then go to Object and Compound Path and click Make. And that just makes this shape into a compound path. It may be easier for you to handle as a compound path rather than a group. It's just your choice. I left mine here as a group, but this one is a compound path. They're exactly the same to all intents and purposes, but it's obviously just a lot neater in the layers palette if it's a compound path. Proving to ourselves as we finish up that these shapes are actually just a series of shapes. There's no lines here at all, and we're obviously able to see through these spaces. I think this was a really good question of that user to ask, and you need to be aware that the situation when you've got lines rather than filled shapes, when you're trying to use minus front, for example, is very different. But it is also very easy to convert a series of lines into a series of shapes by using that expand option. Before we finish up this video, please note that I have Illustrator training at Skillshare.com. If you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. I also have Illustrator training at udemy.com and there's a referral link for every one of my courses in the description below. So please feel free to share these with family and friends. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something from it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.